Folks, welcome to So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey. This is your pal Ryan, and this is your Monday episode. We are back at it again doing a pop culture roundup, and we have something we have somebody new. I'm throwing her into the deep end. I was gonna have her on in a couple of weeks, but then I had somebody uh back out, unfortunately, and she was able to hop in, and I couldn't be more thrilled because this is a perfect person to talk about all things pop culture, all things Bravo, everything that we love. We are doing this early on Sunday because Tonight is the Oscars. I'm going to really wait to see if there's a Tom Sandoval joke by Jimmy Kimmel just to really feed this man's ego once again. But uh, our guest today is a professor of pop culture. She is a brand strategist. She sees all of the trends. You might know her from her insanely good TikTok where she uh, came to fame by doing celebrity flow charts, which we'll get into. But I mean, she really does have her uh, pulse on everything pop. And I just recently became aware of her a couple of, like I think about six months ago because of Threads, which is Instagram's kind of Twitter killer, in my opinion, or what I hope it to be. Uh, but I just love everything that she says. I think she has just a real unique talent of being very succinct and laser-like with her thoughts, which is something that I'm not. So I'm so glad she's here today. Uh, but it's the one, the only Abby Bonadies. Abby, welcome to the show. Woo, we're so happy to be here. Let's do this. A little Sunday fun day together. Yeah, listen. What do you, so what do you what do you got? I you when I look at your Instagram, you're always out in New York doing something fabulous, fantastic. <laughs> it seems like you have this amazing life. Who knows if that's true based on social media? But <laughs> yeah, exactly. What, where are you going for the Oscars tonight? I am actually going to hang out with Threads. I'm going to go do a little <laughs> makes so much sense now that we're talking. We're doing a little watch party. Um, for the Oscars with Threads. I've done it for a couple of the other award shows and we've had so much fun. They usually have us do little Mad Libs and Superlatives, which is my bread and butter for the award <laughs> shows. So I'm very excited. Oh, so Abby, I usually I usually lock myself in my place and I don't go out <laughs> a lot, but I, I accepted an invitation tonight to go to a direct TV viewing party at Spago. And it's like hosted by Rob Lowe. And I'm like really nervous Amazing. about going because there's an a, 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 there's like a red carpet thing. Like, and I have to, I've never done a red carpet step and repeat thing, even though I've made fun of so many through the years. How, do, <laughs> what do I do, Abby? Like, what, what do I do at a step? Like, do I, I feel like I'm just going to do the thumbs up a lot. <laughs> yeah. And I, that's like, what, how do you, how do you do, be my brand strategist? How do I do a red carpet? I would love to. Are you being the person who's walking the carpet or are you doing interviews? No, on just wa walking. I would <laughs> rather be interviewing. I'm walking. Like I'm so awkward in my normal life. Like, how do I do this? Do I just stand in one? I, and also nobody's going to know who the F I am. Yes, they will. They will definitely know who you are, especially direct TV will be there. So you're like TV God. So it makes sense. <laughs> but like, I would just make sure you're wearing something you feel confident in because when you get uncomfortable with like what it might look like, you never know where it will go from there. But then you got to get your poses down in the mirror before oh, and just make yeah. it quick. Make it quick, uh, you know? <laughs> poses. I, I, that's just that. Are, like, and I'm going to like wear, I, the only thing I think I'm comfortable in is like a burlap sack. Or just perfect. like basketball shorts <laughs> and like my normal TV watching attire. But I thought you would be the perfect person to ask about that. Okay, so you're doing that. And then today, you guys, uh, if you feel a little drag on my end, it's because an hour of time got stolen away from us so cruelly as it does every year. Uh, yeah. How are you dealing with the time change so far? You seem like you... You seem like you're a person that gets up at like five in the morning. You can survive on four <laughs> hours of sleep. Like, how are you dealing with the time change? I absolutely can survive on four hours of sleep, but I am not a 5 a.m. -er. I'm more of like an 8.30-er, which in my new life as full-time content creator has been quite lovely, being able to sleep a little <laughs> later than going to the office. <laughs> um, okay, so there has been so much stuff that is happening in pop culture this last week. Uh, I will say right off the bat on uh, Sunday morning, I was awoken with Kate Middleton. Uh, she Her first official like Buckingham or Kensington Palace or whatever said they, they released this photo with her and her kids. She's seated in a chair. There's been so much um, mystery surrounding uh, whatever she's going through. Uh, what did you take away from this photo? I took away that it was very staged as usual, but that is what to expect. She looks lovely. The kids are so grown up, which is always like 
a little bit of a jump scare every single time we see them. I'm like, I forget <laughs> that they're not like one month old still. Um, but I think it was very, very planned that they did that. Hopefully it's real, but you yeah. never know. Okay. Let's. It was very staged, but I think a lot of things in pop culture are staged. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing, but we are so primed in pop culture right now that everything is a conspiracy. And I think that's the frustrating thing as a pop culture lover is that we've almost taken our love of pop culture and we've like thrown it into the dark side. Like it is so it can't just be an actual normal injury or illness now. It has to be something more. Right. And people are so obsessed with like we haven't seen her in three months. Yes. Three isn't that long of a time. <laughs> Some people haven't seen me for years, like my close friends. Like, that's why. Um, all, I mean, like, the other thing people pointed out, though, is that she wasn't wearing a wedding ring in the photo. Did you see that? I did not notice that, but that is normally something I would notice. Maybe it was the daylight savings had me a little <laughs> yeah, <she's, thrown> off. <laughs> or she was like to read. She was like, I put my rings in a different area. You know, like, it was very... <laughs> Um, but it is interesting that everything is pop culture now. Like it's not just celebrities. We've now thrown it into government. We've thrown it into the Royals and the Royals have always had a long history in terms of people being fascinated with the inner workings. I think it's just interesting is if something actually is wrong with her, we've thrown it down this other rabbit hole of, you know, she's dead already. That's a body yeah. double. It's crazy. It's crazy. And in the pictures of her that came out when they forced her to like get in a car so we knew that she was still alive, people are like, that's Pippa. There's no way. Like, <laughs> yes. It's just a spiral. And I mean, we live for it because we love the conversation. But at the same time, it's like, Maybe she did just have surgery. <laughs> well, and I mean, that's the funny thing. Imagine if she did have surgery and then they're like, hey, I'm sorry. We got to get you out of this bed. You got to get in the car because people are freaking out. It's like, yeah. I can barely move. What are you talking about? Literally. Poor woman. Um, <laughs> what, is your, what is your history with pop culture? Why do you love it so much? Why are you drawn to it? I would say my history with pop culture definitely stems from TV and reality TV. When I was growing up, it was like American Idol, Kardashians, obviously, Real World, all of those MTV shows like yeah. Super Sweet 16, Next. Yes. That was like my stuff. So I think that's where it stemmed. And then those were the people that kind of became popular. Obviously, we had like the Paris Hilton, Nicole Richie, Simple Life era. And then it was just kind of grew from there. And I just love celebrities. I've always wanted to just like not be one, but be yeah. like celebrity adjacent. So I feel like that is sort of where I'm at right now, which I yeah, appreciate. There's, <laughs> I, there's just something that makes me feel so good and always has, even as a young, you know, as a kid, I was always just so drawn to it. But I think the interesting part about celebrity and pop culture now is the confluence of reality stars becoming the center of certain pop culture uh, trends. And also it's not just movie stars and musicians right. who actually had singular talents. You now have reality stars, which is then I think of course was the precursor to influencers. And I'm like, where yeah. do we end? Like, where do you see this headed next? Because nobody could have predicted TikTok 15 years ago. Right. Where are we headed next? Because you know, people like you, or even to a lesser degree, people like me, we're able to get our voices out there. And all of a sudden there's like some weird tiny spotlight on us, which I never personally wanted, but it is interesting because when does that bubble burst? And do we ever have movie stars and musicians the way we used to? I know I do. I do miss the A list of it all. I think yeah. we have definitely gotten like less, you know, obsessed with the Leos and the Scarlett Johansson yeah. and all those people where like they do still deserve that spotlight because to your point they are the ones who actually have that amazing talent not that our reality friends don't but you know I think that there is going to be a circle back of like the big blockbuster the more intense shows but I do love that they're still giving people like Kim a spot on American Horror Story and it just <laughs> kind of like connects our worlds together but yeah. it's kind of crazy. I was watching, uh, I had a, a uh, I didn't have to podcast yesterday. It was like the first day in like weeks and weeks. And I watched, I had a real man day. I put it, to, I put together Legos and I watched Dune. I, I finally watched Dune Love part it. one. And I was like, Timothy Chalamet is, you know, for all that I make fun of him, he really is one of the last bastions or hopes of a male movie star in that sense of the Leos, the Brad Pitts, the Tom right. Cruises. But at the same time, I thought like, 
I think it's just me getting older of like how exhausting it must be for old Timothy Chalamet because he's also thrown himself now into the Kylie Jenner pool potentially, even yeah. though they're very, I mean, that Golden Globes onslaught was wild to see. Wild and felt very off brand for the Kardashians. Yes! It was wait, off, wait, wait, wait. I mean, what, in what way was it off brand for them, you feel? Because I feel like they usually keep that kind of stuff secret when they're not so sure if it's going to like last or amplify a product or something like that. But I do think that she's going to walk with him on the carpet tonight at the Oscars. See, that's what I was going to ask you is, do you think we will see a red carpet walk? of Because Kylie Jenner, by the way, there was a New York Times article on Kylie Jenner this week that was talking about, you know, her always being uncomfortable with her face. The, yeah. you know, what is Kylie Jenner selling next? This kind of thing. And there is a, you know, with her look, you know, people have assumed since she met Timothy Chalamet, there is a, uh, a simplifying of her look because she is with Timothy Chalamet, which is potentially so offensive for Agreed. a woman to hear. Agreed. I do see what they are talking about. <laughs> no, I know. By the way, even though it's offensive, I do see exactly what people are right. talking about. But I do think like Kylie, out of all of these people, like she goes through her eras. She had her King Kylie era with her blue yeah. hair. Then she became more like Kim. And now she's in like her soft girl era, which is like fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I, think I, wait, wait, I want her to be in her sloppy girl era. Like the Same. one that's like just... Too much Taco Bell, like a little bit of a belly. Like, I want that era. And, like, going out all the time. Like, we never got that from her. Like, the Paris club era. We never got that from Kylie. <laughs> well, yeah. The Kardashians have now ensured it. Well, th they will never have a photo like the Britney Paris, uh, you know, like, they will never have that sloppy car photo with the Kardashians anymore. Unless Hopefully they plan it. Unless they plan it. But I think we can have faith in some of our favorite reality TV stars besides the Kardashians that we could get some mess like that. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I the the I was watching Dune, though, and I was thinking, like, that that's what's so funny about when you date a celebrity or somebody in that kind of uh, worldview is that I was sitting there thinking, does Kylie like Dune? Like, <laughs> does she understand Dune? Like, does she understand, like, the, the bigger messaging here? And then also Timothy Chalamet is now being seen around New York holding a guitar because he's playing a young Bob Dylan in yes. a biopic. And I just, I've said this many times, but I just, there's something that makes me smile so much thinking that Kylie Jenner has to sit around listening to Bob Dylan. Obsessed. I'm obsessed with that, especially because they, they probably do have some sort of connections to that entire like celebrity musician. Like we just watched, um, the great night in pop about we are the Ooh, world. Oh, we are wasn't that great on Netflix? So I talked about it and, so much. Yes. And Bob Dylan in that had me dying. He looked miserable, so yeah, lost, yeah. so confused. <laughs> and just thinking about Kylie trying to like understand how much of like a recluse and like genius musician he was, and trying to see like Willy Wonka do that is just hilarious. Well, the Bob Dylan thing also just, and I know this is so hip to talk about you, all you kids out there love Bob Dylan, but it is interesting. Yeah. Like he meant so much to like counterculture and culture into the sixties, into the seventies, but in this great night is the greatest night of pop on Netflix in the eighties. He's around all of these kind of like pop star icons at the time that sang pop music singing, we are the world. And he did not know how to do it. And you find, you get to see Bob Dylan being probably his most human ever where he almost comes across nervous. And then Stevie wonder of all people has to has to show Bob Dylan how to sing Bob Dylan in We Are the World. He's like, Insane. you got to do this. <laughs> and then he, but it, it was like, wow. And a, a legend having to try to like assimilate to, to pop stars. Exactly. And like, you know, my brain, I'm like, oh, he's there. And Michael Jackson's there. And Michael Jackson's really connected to the Kardashians because Kim yeah. went to prom. Yeah, with by the way, <laughs> you guys, you got to see this flow chart she does. Like, I'll, I'll link it or maybe I'll even see if I can put in some of the audio if she gives me permission. But it is genius in talking about what was it? The uh, Avril Levine taiga relationship. That and she does brilliant. this brilliant flow chart of why it connects to everything and every sort of pop culture. And you remember so many. That's what's grow so great. We have a history of talking about pop culture now through these things. I yeah. want you to do one on Vanderpump Rules so desperately. I did one like a year ago in the beginning of the flow. Phase. Oh, it could go so much bigger now. So much bigger. So that is definitely one I need to work on, especially now that we have like some other show crossovers and other, like you said, 
literal pop culture crossovers, like yeah. not just Vanderpump or Bravo. Well, you can do one just with Jax Taylor, but all just all the relationships he lied about. Like he potentially did hook up with Lindsay Lohan, question Amazing. mark. Yeah. And um, with Laura Lee, who ends up being in um, the We Are the Millers movie where she yeah. left the show and everyone was like, yeah, yeah, you're going to be in a movie with Jennifer Aniston. Sure. And then she was. She was. <laughs> Laura Lee, by the way, uh, iconic early cast member, first season of Vanderpump Rules. I I want her. I want them to bring her back for the valley. Like, love. Would love that. Um, OK, before we get off the Kardashians, I just want to point out this week we also got our first teaser trailer they are coming back for their new season of their show now what's funny about this in two ways is it's a hulu show but they are now heavily promoting it as a disney plus show which i found interesting and uh it has been the longest amount of time that we've had a kardashian less like year in terms of usually their show is like usually two or three months directly after we have a long period of time almost to the point where i saw this and i was like oh yeah, the Kardashians. What was your what was your thought on seeing this little teaser trailer? It was guys, it was just nothing. It was them posing like the Avengers, like they always do. No, well, it was very Dune coded. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, they're what they're riding a sandworm. No, but they are in the desert. Yeah, Timothy's impact is shining through. But <laughs> I thought that it was interesting about how long it took to get it because I think we're getting back into the phase where, like, keeping up when it was on E. All of the stuff we see in the show is so much later than when we see it on yeah. social media. So I'm interested how they're going to work that because we've seen everything. Like we're already tapped into how Kim has two finger injuries right now and all of her random yeah. like, pictures. Wait, wait what, what happened to her like fingers? I saw them bandaged up when somebody, by the way, I watched this insane TikTok video of somebody doing <laughs> screenshots to show all Kim's apps on her phone. And I noticed the I two fingers. That. I saw yeah. that. That was crazy. I'm like, they were all so basic. I loved how many editing apps she had. I'm like, are we surprised? <laughs> she had a, yeah. Well, I always thought she farmed that uh, job out to other people. Hey. And I was like, I thought other, I thought a team of creators got to work on her like editing, but she does it herself, which is like Picasso potentially. Um, also, she had Daily Mail and TMZ on her. And I was like, hell yeah, sister. All right. I'm obsessed with it. And Reddit. I was like, good for her. <laughs> oh, God. Reddit. God, God. She must be so depressed on the daily. Uh, I don't even know. You can't possibly be reading that stuff about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, how in this uh, day and age, though, like you said, that point of, you know, we know these events that happen way before we see them on TV. How does reality TV eventually compete with some TikToker that can go on and talk about events immediately? And we're seeing this with this season of Vanderpump Rules, especially where we're now talking about Instagram photos and Instagram comments and things like this that we lived through five, six months ago. And now we're seeing the other side of that. Is that fascinating or is that eventually something reality shows we're going to have to fix where they're going to have to find a way where you got to stay up all night and edit this. We got to put it out this week. That's what I was just going to say. I think it's un unfortunately for all of the producers who work so hard, they're going to have to work a little quicker and harder because we need the shows to come out more aligned with when we're getting it in the news. Cause we have it all right at our fingertips. And speaking of Kim's fingertips, like that's probably going to be like three seasons from now. And we're going to be like, yeah. Oh yeah, we're over that. She broke her fingers doing her face editing apps. There was like too many to like, ah, my fingers. Um, okay, so what is the number one thing this week that you have been fascinated with? Reality show, pop culture. What is the number one thing in your mind? that? By the way, because I always make this point of pop culture is this 24-7 news cycle now that we, you know, things come and go so quickly and we forget about just two weeks ago, the amazing things that we saw or read or anything like that. What is stuck in your mind for more than one day this week? My main, what the people on TikTok call my Roman empire this week has been Chelsea and Jimmy from love is blind Woo! date and soft launching it. Like no one was going to figure it out with the location okay. tag. So you guys, if you do not watch this season of Love is Blind, Love is Blind is back in a big way. I love this season dearly, but we had our final episode before the reunion, which we will see this week, and Chelsea and Jimmy, which is just, I mean, by the way, I will say Jimmy takes a lot of heat, and I know I'm a dude, so I don't know if I could, like, is, uh, I thought his conversation with Chelsea at the beginning of this last episode 
made a lot of sense in terms of, and, and by the way, I think a lot of us male and female have been on, been on both sides of this conversation, yeah. but he actually made a lot of points and he said, I'm not like, I, I, I want to be with you, but I'm not ready to get married. Um, and then she was like, what are you talking about? I can't believe you. And then this week, you guys, we now get photographic proof that they are still hanging out at least. Right. right. They're at least what do you think of all this? I think I totally agree. I thought Jimmy handled that conversation actually so well, but also I see all the people in the comments like, what did you think was going to happen when you went on the show? Like that's the <laughs> point. <of> the <laughs> yeah. By the like, way, as a viewer, you have to like keep reminding yourself like at this point, they've only known each other three weeks. Like three they've weeks. only known each other three weeks. And only seen each other for one and a half of them or whatever. <laughs> and I just think, I think he handled it really well. I think she is a bit of a whiner. And I think she was trying to play it up because she knows she's on this show. And she's like, isn't that the point of what we're supposed to be doing here? And I think they kind of, she maybe lost sight of the fact that they have only known each other for three weeks. And maybe it's okay that because they had a huge fight, it was all right not to go to the altar. Yeah. Also like that, I think that's the most responsible thing for Jimmy to do is that like, listen, totally. this is, I actually am, I think in love with you, but like, let's not lock it down, lock it down until we're, cause that can be even potentially more damaging to both of us long-term, right. but it's great television to watch. And I think this season, they just had so many great. And like the, the one that we saw this week and spoiler alert, if you have not seen this final episode is AD and clay. AD and Clay, and I love AD so much. And so much. I, I I empathize with Clay because this seems like a man that is very at war with himself. Yeah. What did you think of the AD and Clay and, and going to the altar and Clay backing out? I think that I wasn't surprised, which I know a lot of people were like, how could he do that to her? I'm like, if you just saw all the signs of him throughout the entire season, of him not even knowing like, oh, guys wear a wedding band when you get married. Like he was totally <laughs> like just not ready to do that. And I think his conversation with his dad right before walking down the aisle was what like sent him over the edge. He was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm so not here to do this yet. I thought that scene with his dad was the most fascinating potentially of the hour. And I, I mentioned this really briefly last week that I thought this was such a perfect example of uh, generational trauma in a sense in that, you know, we really do certain, you know, the sins of our parents, the sins of our fathers, they really do sit in our mind. And you saw in that conversation that he was so in admiration of his dad, in fear of his dad. And his dad came in of like, you got to be positive all the time. If it's not like this, it's got to be like, this. like, like literally read this positivity poem to him that he had at the ready. And you saw that whole man's life. And then the the father, you guys, the whole the whole gist was that he was so scared about commitment because his father had cheated on his mom multiple times. So he and by the way, he seems genuinely confused. It doesn't seem like an act with with no, with Clay. Certainly not an act. I think he's totally like internally tortured. And he was I think he yes. said that like his dad like brought him with him to cheat on his mom. I know. Like that'll that'll mess you up. I mean, imagine being in the car where it's like, hey, kid, I got to go get some nookie and then, you know, play with your little game here and I'll be back. That's wild. That's wild. So it all makes But you can't sense. take that away from Clay. Like, Clay right. can be a lot of things, but you can't take away these things actually happen to people and they do leave a mark. And I think sometimes with reality shows, we've, like, stopped actually empathize. Like, we stop actually... Like the thing about reality show that I love is that second screen technology makes these shows fly. Like it, it depends on people like us tweeting, yeah. Xing about it, or sorry, not, uh, threading about it, all of these things. Um, but the other thing that we forget though, is that we leave ourselves out of the equation of how messed up our own lives are. Right. So everybody's like, how dare him not realizing that like every, every one of us has done something so idiotic that it was on reality television. We would not last. We would not survive that storm. A hundred percent. I think people like Clay, where you can actually see that he's so torn and because it's a direct relation to this experience he gave us and explained, 
we can relate. But then there's like, you know, our other people, like the Jack Taylors of the world and stuff. Where <laughs> like, we'll we'll get to Jack. Yeah. You just keep doing it. So I felt, I felt bad for Clay in that moment because I felt well, bad for AD, obviously. But of course, uh, obviously. But I think AD is just a, a queen to know. Like I just thought she was such a great character. And there's always that character that seems like to be, uh, you know, th- I always call it the reliable narrator where yes. I trust them. You know, they're not, they're, they're, they seem to have their head, like the, the biggest, the biggest bad thing about her is that she chose to go on the show in the first place. I totally that already did. makes me, I'm like, oh, well, she's not completely sane because that's an insane thing to sign up for this show. An insane thing. And I like, I kind of hope she has a world of a little bit of reality spinoffs because I do just love seeing her. Like, I'd love to see her yeah, on yeah. like Perfect Match and those other shows. But well, I listen, think- we know Je- we know Jessica's going on a perfect match. Jessica's yeah. the guy that, or sorry, the lady that, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy was originally like choosing between uh, her and Chelsea. And she had a monologue from the beginning that like, kind of like, you are going to have to have an epi pin when <laughs> you like choke when you see who I am. And she's perfect for reality television as well, oh. but in a different way than AD. Especially because... Jessica actually has a daughter and like feels like she does want to find her partner, but has a little bit of that like crazy reality person personality yeah. where it's yeah. like, you think you're going to find that on these shows, which is hilarious, but we are here for it and we will be watching. <laughs> I always think about that when I watch Sheena with Summer Moon. I'm like, you are being trained to eventually take over for your mom. Yeah, 100%. Uh, uh- Adorable summer moon. I mean, ob- obviously, how dare you, Tom Sandoval, for blocking her? Uh, f- uh, back to to uh, Ad and Clay, though. Yeah. I just want to point out Clay. The the reason I do sense that he is searching to be a better person, and that's the difference between somebody like him and Jax. Jax will talk the talk, but he never walks that walk. Yeah, and he doesn't ever really seem super conflicted about his behavior, even when he should be. That is such a good point. I think you can tell with Clay that he felt really bad to do this to AD, but I think he was also surprised himself that she was so upset because he's like, I'm not breaking up with you. I just am not ready to say I do. So I think that he actually, unlike Jack, showed some remorse, showed some confusion and like actual human quality of how he felt in that moment. What are your hopes for the reunion this week? And are Nick and Vanessa Lachey the right hosts for this uh, for Love is Blind? Um, immediately, no, unfortunately. <laughs> I, think, I think that they need to bring um, that couple from the first season, Lauren and... Oh, I, I had Lauren on the show. Lauren's face. She was so great. She I yes, and they, they, they host. They're great. And by the way, their relationship is so great. It's so fun to watch. So I think you're right. I, I mean, that's completely would be the right choice. And they know the scenario they're in. Like Nick and Vanessa cannot relate whatsoever. So I think that their hosting gig is maybe up soon and they have some people who could do it better. But in terms of what I want to see on the reunion, I need to see that guy, Matthew, who came in with the questions and ask yeah. him the same questions. I want him on there, hopefully. And then uh, he seemed he out. seemed almost like ready to lose it. Everybody thought he was like the serial killer one, yeah. but he just seemed like he was like, oh man, oh god. Like he and and by the way, the only person that got along with him was AD. Exactly. So I hope that she addresses like what he was actually like. I also do think we need a little bit of feistiness between Jimmy, Chelsea, and Jessica. And I think. I'm excited to hear where Clay and AD are at at that point. I think we are. Well, did you see those photos that she was like, uh, he was with her family at some like uh, function. So I I think they are still together. I think they are still together. That makes me happy, actually. Yeah, because that's the thing, too. I was thinking about like even at the end of the day, when you take away all these cameras, you still did build some really personal bond where these people do know so much about you that I would imagine that would be hard to walk away from once the cameras are down. I agree. I think I that's probably why Chelsea and Jimmy are like still trying to see what their situation is because oh they God. gave each other a lot. But it's Chelsea, Chelsea is doing a lot of TikToks too, by the way. Chelsea and by the way, I you know, whatever, like because she got such a onslaught of, you know, oh. because of the Megan Fox comment, she seemed to have a good sense of humor about it. But at the same time, I'm like, you know, you went after Jimmy saying, like, you don't want somebody that goes out even for an hour and a half, but like you're out there doing TikToks, you're out there. I'm like, oh man, this is so hypocritical in so many ways. It really is. And I think she's also like 
almost overcompensating for like that. I can take a joke. It's like, okay, like <laughs> I, it's okay. If that hurt your feelings. Like, it's you know, okay. the moment she like hits like stop on the TikTok, she's like, Oh, <laughs> <100%, cries laughs> <off all> <laughs> yeah. poor Jimmy's like, Oh, she's on TikTok again. He's um, like, uh, block. <laughs> can, can I tell you my Roman empire for this week? Please. Okay. It's the traders. I mean, Roman empire forever. This I, was beyond. We're like love is blind. Uh, there is a there is a silliness about love is blind. Like I said, you have to accept. But for some reason, the traders, even though there's completely cheesy moments, <laughs> I was so invested Thursday. Like I finished my work early, like which I usually never do, just so I could be at the TV right when it came on. And I was like, it reminded me of being a kid watching reality shows again before I had to talk about it where I was just so, I really, like, I almost could, I was so in love with it. I was so in love with it. And I, every surprise, even though people are in all up in arms with the choices at the very end, but I just loved it. What did you think of it? I absolutely loved it. I think it ended exactly how it should have, which we can get into. But I think at the beginning I was there too. I'm refreshing Peacock. Like, is it nine yet? Is it nine yeah. yet? It was just like a different feeling of like, I didn't even feel like that when this season of Vanderpump premiered, which I know everyone was yes. like, what? yo, no, I have, I have such negative feelings attached to Vanderpump right now. I have such happy right. feelings with the traders. Yeah. Same. I was like, I was so excited and knowing that we got the reunion right after I was like, I just have two hours of pure bliss coming up. Yeah. So guys, I thought this was the only, my only complaint was that if you, I've now watched it a couple of times and I've done a poll yeah. Patreon, like where I recapped every moment, but it was like, once you get to the challenges, the challenges are great, but that time clock is such a liar. Like, and they even like Alan was even like posted with Kate Chastain or sent a post of like them having to pause because of bad weather. So they couldn't get the dinghy boat to the main boat to raise the main sail. And I just want like, that's the silly. I'm like, okay, you're going to get literally all of these people that seem so potentially out of shape, like myself to get into the little boat. You have like six minutes left. Like none of the time on that added up yeah. to me at all. Me neither. And when they were raising the last flag, I was like, that probably took them 20 minutes. <laughs> and poor CT. CT's like, oh, uh, and MJ's like, uh, uh, you know, like, but she's trying. And the other two ladies are just like way watching them do it. And I, like, but at the same it. time, there was for all you challenge heads, like for CT to be in his element. And now CT and Trishel won at the end. And the big dust up here is that MJ right there at the very end, they get her out of there. When I, that's what's so great. Like in my stupid head, I was like, oh, they are going to end it here. All three of them are going to share the money. It's not a lot of money, which I'm like, it's more money than I have, but it's, a, you know, it's, it's great. It's a happy feeling. And then they get MJ out of there and people were in an uproar, but it's called the traitors. What did you think? I, thought it was perfectly played. I have this new theory that I think the next season, the tagline should be, even if you're a faithful, you need to be a traitor. And that's exactly what CT and Trishel did. They were traitors against MJ in the end. Well, and Trishel has taken such a beating online. And that's why it's important to get offline because you can yeah. like sit with your own feelings about it. But I will say in watching it back, CT is the one that screwed MJ over initially because, and now people are doing the conspiracy theories of like, they had that plan. CT and Trishel planned that off camera to do that. I don't know. But at the same time, like I love M like MJ, if anything, this was such a showcase for her. And that's what I keep trying yeah. to like, even tell her is that like, yo, like the, you're so, you're so fun on TV. But if you looked at the gameplay and I'm sorry, MJ, the gameplay, MJ made so many mistakes time and time again. Like she was like the bat, like she was such a night, great person and like really played the game and like, uh, but like Trishel and CT to, but Trishel, I mean, she was making moves. I mean, she's a prof Remember she's a professional poker player in her past. Right. Like I, MJ was just too nice and too faithful. And I'm so proud of how far she got. And I agree. Like finally people are seeing how amazing her personality is and all that. Like we need her back on our screens for sure. But Trishel, the entire time she had it sniffed out, she knew about Phaedra. She knew about all of them. She was even three steps ahead of Peter, who was supposed to be like Mr. Strategy. <laughs> he but got too cocky. He got he too cocky. And, and that's the thing. The, I, I kept thinking about like how you would play the game is that that's the other thing. You don't want too much of a spotlight on you. You don't want people complimenting your gameplay during the game. Yeah. Because then you get you get two in your own head, which is exactly what the producers want you to do. But Trishel just like, 
figured out a way to rise above it and kind of sneak around while still throwing the right darts at the people who needed to get out so her puzzle could work out in the end with CT, and it did. And by the way, Drishel can be grating at times when she was like, going, ah, da, da, like she was going up to people. I get that, I get yeah. that. But the fury, and then like the also lack of actually putting CT in that same pot, where I'm like, CT made the killer move that got MJ out at the very end. And at the end of the day, though, it also goes to show you which camp you came into this show supporting. Like, yeah. I'm a Bravo dude, but at the same time, I used to be a challenge guy. So yeah. there was something so, I don't want to use the word romantic, but there was something wistful in me watching the challenge as a kid and watching those last two people, especially throughout having Trishel talk about how important that relationship with CT was. I thought it was like, what a storybook ending. I totally agree. And I think that like, knowing they actually do have the history that isn't so positive, seeing them end on that high note of like true trust and gamer friendship was like really special. And you could even see it on Alan's face. He was like, I know. I oh, you're not the traitors. You won. Oh, and like he was like, and, and CT First was like hugging, hugging Alan. Like it was, and by the way, Alan coming hell, you know, we talk about Nick and Vanessa Lachey not being great. Like this Alan coming put, everything into it that you possibly everything. could it could it that's one host where it couldn't be anyone else well, yeah you, well you know what because because a lot of people would not like a lot of people would get that and they would you would see it on their their face that they're like not fully committing that they're embarrassed of it this guy yeah. through every this guy you see that theater stage actor in there and it so just goes good. to show you like, that's what I love about talented people. Like, if you get that right opportunity, no matter how many years it's been since your last big thing, you know, you never know where life's going to take you. And that's what's so, it's, it's this horrible lottery that these people play in show business. Yeah. But you love this because you're like, oh, this has given him at least eight more years of like great opportunities because of this. For sure. And I think based on the challenges and the wardrobe and everything, Traders has the budget. Like, they are- I know. I know, right? <laughs> they are locked in. <laughs> I was uh, I was talking to uh, somebody this week, and I I said, you know, those poor uh, the poor traders casting department that are getting flooded with the like put my client on. You need to put my client on. You need to get like because this is I think the show to get on right now. Mm -hmm. In your dream of dreams, who do you want to see in this show? And do you want to see the same breakdown of like Survivor, Big Brother, Housewives? Uh, one random politician. Like, do you want to see the same breakdown? I think we need to expand a little bit. Now that it has such high, like big eyes on it, I think we need to expand to, like we could get a Scott Disick or a Black China. Oh my God. Wait, do you think I was even, do you ever, by the way, this is why I like, guys, this is why I love the podcast. Like I literally just acted like I was talking to a friend. I'm like, do you think, do you, th like, do you <laughs> think that like, there's a world in which we could get a Khloe Kardashian now? I, I actually do. I really do. And I think that that would be such a fun character arc for Chloe because she's kind of turned into this like so nice, like supportive mother. Yeah. And it's like she has that fire in her, but I do think Scott would be amazing. And he could bring back like his Lord Disick era outfits. Yeah. What, are, what are you talking about? I didn't do that. Well, come on, Chris, Chris where are no? Chris. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just so don't I give me a Corey. I don't want Corey Gamble on this show. Do not put Corey Gamble do on this show. Corey. He doesn't deserve it yet. But the rest do. I also think we need either like a Jay Wow or an Angelina from Jersey oh. Shore. Yeah, we don't have we haven't had a Jersey Shore person yet, right? Yeah. I think they would be good. I think if I had to guess who it would be, it would probably be the situation. <laughs> but I think one of the girls would do a little bit better. Well, you know, now it becomes actually a, you know, not even the traders, but now it's the competition of who has the best representation to exactly. get on this show, you know, because that's what it is. You guys behind the scenes, it's these right people that you've chosen to hire for you that have the in with the casting department that, that bugs these people to like, no end of like, you got to give them a shot. You got to give them a shot. Yeah. Somebody in my Facebook group said this, and I thought it was interesting. Andy Cohen, of course, hosted the reunion, but she said, I would love to see his gameplay. We would actually finally get to see how his mind potentially works outside of hosting. You know, we always like the big, that. bad Andy Cohen. Wouldn't that be interesting? That would be, I would love that. I think that they, the next season can be big names like Andy or Scott or Jay. Wow. I also think, I know you were just on with Spencer and Heidi, which was oh, amazing. I mean, they would be unbelievable. I also think Kristen Cavallari would be amazing. 
those are like such like on the nose castings for me that right. I feel like they're going to even not do it, even though it's like so perfect because it's so on the nose. Like, yeah. I think this show is made for somebody like Spencer and to see like, that's what I, when I did the Spencer and Heidi podcast, you guys a couple weeks ago, what was so great was that watching their dynamic in real life in real time. And even yeah. when we weren't recording, I was like how real of a relationship it was and like how Heidi does give him shit and the way he receives it is very funny. And I was like, this is just hysterical. Like, you know, or just how she would talk about like, Oh yeah. Like when you made us do all those like uh fake paparazzi photos and da, 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 just talking about these iconic moments, but you realize how real of a couple they truly are. I love, I love them. I think they would be amazing. And I also think, that could maybe get it into a different universe of that Jersey Shore, Laguna Beach, the hills, like expanding from the Survivor and the Bravo, which those still need to be there. But we could. Well, listen, I mean, Mitch McConnell just retired last week. If we get a Mitch McConnell, <laughs> hey, guys, how are you doing? <laughs> like that was just so dark. It's very oh, dark, you know. Glasses. Um, I also think I do like that they tried to put an athlete on there. Cause I have a special love for dancing with the stars that always has an athlete. So I think some retired football players or basketball players would be good to throw in there too. You're talking about Deontay, right? Yes. Which by the way, Deontay like took the game so seriously that he kind of had a mental, uh, he was very mentally upset about it and had to be, had to remove himself from the game. And he even talked at the reunion, how Phaedra had such a good conversation. Yeah. That's the other thing too, is that I want cameras all the time. Like if the, like, you know, Phaedra also talked about a conversation she had with Trishel where she kept Trishel in the game because of this conversation that they had. I want those conversations. Give me those. I agree. It needs to be a little bit more. I don't watch it as frequently, but like big brother esque where we see stuff all the time. Because yeah. we need to know where those conversations are happening. I love, I mean, I don't love, but I love, don't love it for Dan, but I love that Phaedra still to like at the reunion, it was like, no, you are a shithead. I do not like you. Uh, no. And, 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 you know, the point is like, no suspicion was on her at that point. Yeah. Really messed up whatever game Phaedra was playing. Um, but God, what a showcase for Phaedra too. It's like, you know, sorry, you didn't get a hundred thousand dollars. You still got your appearance fee and you showed people once again, like not just married to medicine, not just Atlanta. You are good TV. Great TV. And I think she has like a big resurgence coming up because of the traders. I also loved how this is what I felt about Phaedra versus MJ at the reunion. I thought Phaedra handled that conversation with Dan hilariously. Like, no, I still think you're a piece of shit. But MJ was like, again, still too emotional about it. It's like, it's a game. You got gamed. It's okay. <laughs> you know, and the thing is, like, I can, like, MJ really is, like, I, I know for a, like, a person, like, I mean, like, I texted her. I was like, yeah. hey, man, you're still, like, uh, you're, uh, you're, you know, you're a winner in my, you know, so, <laughs> like, and you can just tell, like, I mean, and I, I feel, and I guess at the same time, you do want those people. That's what's so great about the traders is that they all played it to the, they, they really made, uh, they sold it. They made us buy into that they really wanted this. And I love that it is like kind of an athlete in a sense, the competition yeah. of it, that they can't let it go. But at the same time, you're like, MJ, come on. Like, it's okay. It's going to be the good. Game. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So we both love the traders. Now we're moving on over to Bravo. We've got Vanderpump Rules, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Potomac, Married to Medicine, uh, Below Deck. We've got so many shows on right now, and we're about to in Beverly Hills, and there's going to be a dearth, like a, like kind of a little programming hiccup in terms of yeah. Bravo and what new shows are coming out. But where are you with Vanderpump Rules season 11? I am still there. I think I went into it with our, you know, reality TV expertise, knowing it was never going to be as good as the last season which is, I think, a mistake yeah. a lot of people made and are complaining about. It's like the, the spotlight that show got, like, sure, it's higher production value. Of course, they put a bigger budget into it. But I still think real stuff is happening, similar to what we said about the conversation about the Kardashians. Like, we already know a lot of this stuff, but it's it's shorter. Like, the actual timeline isn't that far away. And I think that, like, the conversation between Sheena and Sandoval, as annoying as Sheena is sometimes, like, that was real. And she was really upset, like, like a real friend. And I'm, I'm still invested. I I'm in. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very interesting. And we kind of, I, I feel like we all knew this is what it was going to be. Right. We all knew that we were going to have Sandoval, um, half real, half performative, trying to win people over, even though the crazy thing is, and Schwartz even keeps like Schwartz even knows this. So like, 
dude, just apologize. Like, just say, yeah, I'm sorry. Like the fact that he now got to a point and I'm so confused, even like, this is what makes me want to like be in on producer conversations Thanks. that Brock has to keep like going, Hey man, I'm sorry about back there. I can't do a Brock invitation, but like I do an Irish. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry, man. He keeps apologizing to Tom after like Brock actually is making good points and then has to like, and I like, were they just told like, you have to keep the conversation going no matter what, because it just confuses yeah. me why people are still like going to him and trying trying to keep the conversation going that Tom would like shut down or freak out about. I agree. I, I, they had to have been told to try to get something new out of him or something like that. And it's just not yeah. happening. Like he is who he is. He will be great for house of villains, but he's just never going to change his feeling. And literally all he had to do was say in that conversation with Lala specifically on the boat, all he had to say was, I'm sorry, even if he didn't mean it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, and the, that, but that's another frustrating thing is like Lala like flips out at you ain't my mama, you ain't my dad, like that. Nor, but then even like ten minutes later, supposedly Lala comes back and they're like, what? What in like in what world? In what reality world would you not stay mad at this man? We've seen Lala stay mad at people for way less. Like I don't get why we are then in the same boat ride making amends immediately, especially for somebody like Lala, who seems to have a lock on certain things. Like Lala yeah. is so confusing to me as a character. I'm not talking about her in real life, but as a character, she is so confusing to me. Me too. And I, I love Lala. I think I love this, like how keeping it real she has been lately. I love how good of a friend she has been to the girl. To who obviously was not always the case, but I am also confused why she is so quick to forgive. I don't know if they've all changed now that they have children or whatever it is, but, or it is just the producers being like, this show is Tom Sandoval. If you're mad at Tom, you're out. <laughs> well, that's the, what you just said right there. You hit the nail on the head. This show is Tom Sandoval. Yeah. And guys, even if you're like, no, I hate Tom Sandoval. Exactly. exactly. That's it. Exactly. That's why the show is Tom Sandoval, because we even see my favorite Ariana. We see what it's like to like, being a favorite in real life is different than being a favorite on reality TV. Yeah. If you are like somebody that is like living your life, protecting your boundaries, all of these kind of things, it sometimes doesn't make for the best reality television, but okay. it is something that she told these people going in that she would not be doing these like scenes with Tom Sandoval. She would not be doing this. And in any other situation, you would be like, hell yes to your best friend or even your acquaintance. Right. Like that is exactly what you need to do. But we follow messes, the biggest mess out there. And the guy that is going to mess up, and we've seen him even after the filming is wrapped, he'll mess up every day. So that spotlight is going to be, because it gets us angry. It gets us there, you know? It does. Yeah. Like, of course, we love watching Ariana succeed in Chicago, Dancing with the Stars, all the things. We're so proud of her as In our real friend. life. Yeah. Yes. But we're tuning in every week to see what dumb thing Sandoval is going to say next, like he did on... Nick Vial's podcast, like he did in the New York Times. New York like, Time. He's a mess. And that's why, like, follow the mess. I love that. That's exactly what we do. And he's the main character, and everyone has to deal with that. Now, you just saw Ariana on Broadway in Chicago. You also went to the talk back with Jessel Tank. Yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, another person that, uh, the, the real, you know, Real Housewives in New York, you guys, and Jessel had a star-making season in terms of Bravo reality TV. But what's so great about reality TV is that, you know, when they filmed it, all those ladies thought she was going to be the loser. They all, like, side-picked on her. Every, like, and that's what she, I love when the audience gets a hold of something because it goes against usually. And then you see now everybody has to kiss ass to Jessel all of a sudden. Oh, and she must be like, wow, I'm living my best life. What, like, first off, what did you think of Ariana in Chicago? Did you find anything fascinating about that talk back? And where do you see her headed from here? Do you see her doing a season 12 of Vanderpump Rules? I think in terms of Chicago, I actually had the opportunity to see it the week she started. And then last week. So there was about a month in between and her, confidence level and improvement in a month was insane. Like, and I heard she was already good at the beginning. She was already good at the beginning. Now she's great. Like, and Roxy Hart, you know, we've seen many, many people play this role. Erica. I'm Erica Jane. Yeah. Erica. yeah. <laughs> and Ariana just has that perfect personality where she can play like the semi-innocent Roxy Hart that they want her to play. And her voice is good. She went to school for musical theater. So everyone who's surprised, it's like, well, she can sing. And her acting, yeah, she that's what. So much better. That's, yeah, see, like people don't realize, like she was a musical theater geek, dude. Like exactly. I like had many conversations with her where 
we geeked out on theater. Like this was always the shit she wanted to do. So I am so damn happy she gets to do it. So when Tom's like giving horrible interviews in the New York times, when he thinks it's going to raise his profile, she's actually there boots on the ground, working yeah. her ass off with an opportunity that she's dreamed of since way before Vanderpump rules. How do you not love that? How do you not love that? And I think in the humanizing part of her, which we were saying we love her as a friend and a person in real life, that's kind of what the talk back showed. Like, obviously everyone wants her to say like, she's out in New York, she's with her new boyfriend, she's doing this and the other thing. And she's like, yeah, I go home and I eat soup and I watch Love is Blind. We were like, yeah. we love her. No, she's <laughs> like, like, I she she'll flip on TikTok like the rest of us. Like yeah. that's what she does. I mean, so I, I don't know. Like, that's what I'm curious about in terms of season 12. Yeah. And everybody's like, Oh, they just, they need to end the show. Now it's not going to happen. Folks. The show makes yeah. money. I'm sorry. I, I love that. Every, we're all like professors of pop culture now. And you know, like, I mean, <laughs> but what I'm saying, like, I love the online thing of like, just end it now. They're not going to end it now, folks. There's, this is here to make money. This isn't here to like, you know, like, Oh, we need to like Shakespearean in this in such beautiful way. Like, no, it's going to keep going regardless if you want it to or not. And we're all going to watch it. So stop saying you're not going to watch it either. Exactly. Um, it's not, it's not big little lies or one of these shows that need, Ted Lasso that needs to like end perfectly scripted. Like it's a reality show. We love it. We need to know what's happening in their lives and we will keep watching. I don't, I don't know if she'll come back. I really don't actually. And I just don't know at this, but that's what I thought. Like all these great opportunities. She's had like hosting gigs on love Island and yeah. she's had, you know, the Broadway, the, the, you know, she's like shown up for like these sponsor things, which shows she's a good spokesman. Like, I think the world is her oyster. And I think, you know, and I don't mean like, and that's the other thing she gets a lot of too. Like, Oh, she's so full of herself. In fact, Lala at the end of this week's episode says she needs to pull her head out of her ass and support her friends. And I'm like, this is what shocks me is that like, where are we seeing Ariana's head in her ass? Like you literally have somebody with their head in their ass on this show, right? Like Tom Zandoval, like how is Ariana by doing nothing? That is her head in her ass. And I think it comes down to the fact that they're just jealous and they would handle it much worse than she's handling it. <laughs> their heads would be in their asses. Like Ariana is a normal, like poised, confident person. Like I think if Lala or, Sheena got that same scenario happen to them. Like it would be crazy. It would not be as oh, clean. And I think that's why it was so explosive is because Ariana is that person that never like fully had that. Like, you know, Sheena's like, it's never about me. It was never really about Ariana in certain ways either. But like, never. she was such like this kind of person, this figure. And that's why when it happened to her, if it happened to Sheena or it happened to Lala, our response to it would be way different where it wouldn't be right. nearly as big at all. So it is interesting to see how we come at it as an audience. And I'm excited to see where it goes, but also the Sheena thing of it. Like also like everybody's down on Sheena. Uh, I personally love her because she's so yeah. Sheena. Like you, you know, yeah. like she's so unapologetically Sheena. Of course, Sheena's going to say, when's it going to be about me and not realize that's potentially a little bit of a silly statement in just her term of history on the show, but she really believes it. And she's sharing that. That's what I want. Me too. And I think Sheena is second to Tom Sandoval as most important characters on the show. Like she's this the season, one that she's yeah. with. Like yes. she, is, she is Vanderpump Rules. So I think her realness, whether it's to a fault or not, is what people come to watch too. Cause it is, it is fun to make fun of her a little bit. And hopefully she knows that, but she is so well, weird. I mean, we see how personal she takes everything. And I do yeah. know, I mean, like she's on that Instagram. She's on that. Like she's following, she reads every mention. She, re yeah. she really does. And I just have to say like, that's gotta be such like, imagine her nervous system and being in reality television for yeah. this long, her nervous system has to be like, somebody needs to study this because it is like the flight fight response in her body has to be so, and especially she's talked about her mental issues. Yeah. She's been open up about that. Yet at the same time, what I love about her is that you would think reading some of these critiques over the years, she'd be like, okay, well, I'll never say this kind of thing on camera again, because yeah. that's where they really hop on me. She, she reads all of it. She just completely kind of ignores it. And, and I, I love that. She leans right back in. I love it. It's like, honestly, so funny. Now, this was a little bit of breaking news this morning. I don't know if you heard is that Ariana ends the first week of April for Chicago. They have announced the replacement for Chicago is Rachel Levis. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Wouldn't that be great though? Wouldn't that be? <laughs> By the way, Abby, guys, if you're not why Abby is like, oh, what? Yeah. Wouldn't that be insane? That would be insane. She'd maybe be a better Velma than Roxy. <laughs> 
But, oh my! Like the shaky voice, and then you know, I, I know. I just thought that would be. I, I'm, you know, hilarious. stunt casting in Chicago. They just like do a whole Vanderpump Rules year. You and know, then you give it to Sheena. <laughs> Vander, so Vanderpump Rules. It's still getting really decent re- ratings. We'll yeah. see where it heads each week. It's, but it is funny how we come at that show. It's like I don't look forward to watching it, and I'm relieved once I do watch it, which is yeah. <laughs> great for TV. You know, um, a little bit more like a doctor's appointment. TV. Yeah, you're like, glad I got that checked out. Um, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, we go into our third part of the reunion this week. We had our second part, which was, you know, there were moments. It was a classic second episode of Housewives uh, reunion. But this next part, Kathy is out on stage. We allegedly, I mean, we see that we start getting a little bit of the Morgan Wade questioning and Sutton allegedly dies. Like, (laughs) uh, what are, what, what, where are you at with Beverly Hills right now? I am I am actually sad it's ending. I thought this was a great season and a much needed update to where they were heading. I am a Kyle girl through and through. Like I think she's the best housewife out there. And Wait, I, you think she's the best housewife even though I mean like listen, I say I love Kyle, but love. the thing that she gets dinged on is that Kyle uh, people use the word manipulates, but Kyle is very protective of actual real life, her real life facts. And I think sometimes you've signed up for the wrong job and, you know, I want to know so much more about these things that are happening. And she is the queen of sidestepping things in a very nice way and trying to throw focus other ways to an esophagus. But like, that's the only frustrating because I do love her so much that I want to know everything. I think that's sort of what she was saying in this last part when she was fighting with Sutton, she's like, I've done it all. My kids have been on it. Like we've had the hard conversations. I've had this crazy family drama with my sisters. And she's like, you bought a horse. Like she's like, I and a cashmere sweater and a cashmere sweater. She's like, I do talk about real stuff. Like just because I wasn't sure where this was heading and I didn't give you everything. She's like, doesn't mean I'm here talking about my dating coach. Like you are. <laughs> well, well, I mean, who knows what next season for Kyle will be like? Maybe she will have a dating coach on, or maybe, like, I hope Morgan Wade's on for the next season. And I don't like, listen, you are not going to get Kyle coming out on this show. So just get it in your minds right now. I know it for a fact. I mean, but we have Kathy even saying in the preview for this week of like, you know, Andy asked a question about Morgan and she looks at Kathy and Kathy says, don't be embarrassed, which I thought was such a telling sentence. Uh, why would somebody be, what is the embarrassing thing? Is it the embarrassing thing? Cause she's potentially with Morgan. Like that's like the kind of thing to like, does Kathy screw up Kyle's trying to not admit certain things, but Kathy's there to mess it up. I think that's Kathy's constant MO. Yeah. Like, like not even on purpose. I think she's just reckless like that, which is why maybe Kyle was a little happier. She wasn't on this season while all this was going on. And I, I mean, Morgan was at Kathy's Christmas party, I think. So obviously Morgan got posted on the grid. Kathy right. posted Morgan on her Instagram grid. That's like how okay she is with it. Which is nice. And like you would want after everything that's happened with Kyle and Kathy, it's nice that Kathy's being so supportive. And I'm very interested to know why Kyle is so hesitant, knowing that Kathy is actually that supportive of it. Like it's not like something that's going to upset her family. It is something that yeah. they support. So I don't know. Well, I mean, like, listen, I, you know, I think at this point, I think something is going on. Like I, and also, but at the same time, I don't care. I like Kyle. I Kyle could be dating a dating like Sutton's horse Santos for all. Like I would be like, great, that's awesome. Santos deserves a great partner. Like I don't <laughs> care. I just am curious how you move forward in reality television. And also, I thought with Kyle, she does seem somebody that like has a very real family with all those girls. Yeah. Is that? Anything that she does, she wants to make sure that her family would be completely okay with it before it is announced. Like, I think us as viewers, we take this ownership over people's lives Mm -hmm. when the reality of that is just not, that's not that for them. I agree. And I think that they're battling now that they have two shows. Obviously, one is Bravo, one's Netflix. Which, by the way, Buying Beverly Hills season two picks up next week, right after the finale of... Uh, which is like real like wild on everybody's part that they scheduled that out so perfectly. It's kind of it's kind of perfect. I actually want to go back. Maybe I need to make a flow of this of like when the timing is that they actually filmed all these. Yes. So yes. I well, no. I am so curious. Like I wish they had timestamps on these things. Like summer right? also do timestamps. Let's do timestamps on these. Especially with when Dancing with the Stars was because that was obviously live. 
and he's promoting yeah. saying as his wife Kyle but obviously I don't know very confusing timeline so I'm in for buying Beverly Hills I love that Kathy was there for like 10 seconds in a makeup trailer, her one scene, and she was all already like, well, I think Kyle's been thinking about this for years, not just the last three or four months. Like already gives us more information than Kyle gives us. And like, just what, you know, she's like being made up. She looks like mommy dearest. It gets wild. Already, like Kathy's so protective of her image. How did she even allow that like makeup trailer footage to be shot? It's hilarious. I She's so unhinged. That's why we love Kathy. But I'm so surprised that they didn't know she was coming. Like when, Andy says, maybe it's in the preview or at the end of this episode. Yeah, Garcelle was like, Kathy's here? Yeah. I'm like, that's kind of shocking that they didn't know, but I kind of love that they surprised them. I also thought Denise Richards made an appearance on the reunion, but we didn't see her. But I always thought she was there. It was alluded to her being there. So I was kind of confused about that. Do you dip into Summer House at all? Oh, yeah. I love Summer House. I think, see, Summer House is like one of those things. It's like Vanderpump Rules Jr. And I don't have the negative feelings associated with it. And it is like... You know, like many, like even though it's big drama, but it's like Carl and Lindsay, of course, were three episodes in and, you know, Lindsay is coming off a very bad episode where she accused Carl of being on drugs, cocaine, Carl, Carl, I think rightfully so took uh, offense to that because it's yeah. something that he's worked very hard on. Then even in the third episode, you know, Lindsay immediately, you know, talks to Danielle in the kitchen of like, he was just so defensive. It was just so weird. I'm trying to talk to him. It kind of shows how we like perceive things in our mind and then try to like almost campaign on a certain yeah. level of truth that doesn't exist for other people, but exists for you. Like, where, where are you at with the Lindsay Carl stuff after seeing it? I am unfortunately for Lindsay. Like I'm, I see Carl's side big time. Like that was uncalled for. I do think if I'm remembering it correctly, the timelines, his sponsor told him specifically not to get in a relationship yet because he was still working on himself. And he did anyway and felt like it was safe because he'd known Lindsay for so long. And there was that hope there that she was going to support him. But after seeing that conversation, it made it so much more clear to me that the breakup was not even close to a surprise to anyone. Well, I mean, we can tell ourselves, we do tell ourselves lies every day. So Lindsay might have been telling herself a different story. And also, I think there's this, you see it even in Love is Blind, which we talked about earlier, is there's this thing of like, once you commit to somebody, and especially a marriage, that means you can't leave. Even though we know you can't, like, it's exactly. like, oh, it's, you know, you have to, no matter what I do, no matter how horrible or what I say, you have, you committed to this. So I think that sometimes gets stuck in people's minds. Yeah, um, sure. But yeah, Lindsay... I, I love Lindsay, like, and I still I love Lindsay, it. but horrible showing in this conversation. She was on Watch What Happens Live after the episode on Thursday, yeah. um, kind of still said, listen, I don't, you know, the choice of my words, I don't like, but it was a complete surprise. It was a complete shock. And to her defense, you know, she said, listen, two weeks before we had the bridal shower, he showed up to this. He was texting me how much he loves me, posting on Instagram on my birthday. Can't wait to marry you. So those things do technically fall into that camp of like, yeah, that he seems all systems go. Yeah. But the thing you made this brilliant point of like, at the end of the day though, Carl never should have gotten into this relationship to begin with at this point, because he, his main priority as it should be was his sobriety and being yeah. finding who he was in his sobriety. And that is why they don't recommend relationships. Right. And I think that for Carl too, He's trying to find himself in his new, clean, happy, go lucky era, and Chug Lindsay chugging a bubbly on the beach instead of a, a, a white. Sorry, instead of a lover boy. Instead of a lover boy, and Lindsay, there is part of old Carl that lives in Lindsay because they were together when he was old Carl, which is why. I don't know if that was ever going to work out properly because if he wanted to move on from his old being that was always going to drag him back into it. So. Well, and also that was the, I was trying to see like how serious I should, I mean, and like how much credence you should give Lindsay's being triggered about more life, old yeah. Carl. And yeah. we saw flashbacks to that of like, I saw him being this certain way. And I'm like, wow, even if you, if you're that triggered by old Carl, that's another reason why even for you, Lindsay, this might not be the one. Um, right. But it, it it's so interesting to watch this play out. What do you think about West and Sierra? They went on their first date at the end of this week's summer house. Uh, they're only three episodes 
in and Wes was trying to like take it easy, but this guy is getting guys crushing harder each episode. Uh, and then they finally go on their first date and you know, like me, a sweater. I loved it. He was sweating, <laughs> loved it. What did you think? I, it's kind of hard not to crush on Sierra. She's amazing. I, I also, thought you were going to say West. I was like, I'm crushing on West. I, think. I'm, I love I'm West. On West. Big time. I think him and Jesse Solomon are fantastic additions. Yes. But I, They're like two. Finally, they nailed like some of them like right in this like new additions. Right. I agree. It's, it's been a nice breath of fresh air. And I, I don't think that him and Sierra are going to end up like romantic, but I no. love that she gave him the chance and he is hilarious. His personality is so cute. Like, they're crushing it. I, I'm happy it ended with a little date and that she like, you know, gave him the time of day to go on that date. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean like, that's the thing. Like Sierra is like just so stunning. Like she's like just, I mean, and I don't, not in a, like, but just, you're like, she really is just gorgeous. No matter yeah. how you cut it that I can't, like, I just imagine Wes sitting down for that date away from the summer house. And I know it's on film, camera, whatever, but yeah, like, you'd but still be like, Oh shit. Like you're still like, I'm sitting across from like the, the literal perfect, a specimen of a human being, you yeah. know? And like to the sweating, we've all been there in a New York city, like restaurant in the middle of August or July or whatever it is. Oh, at dude. That nervousness. Like I don't blame him. He, he acted exactly how I would have acted. <laughs> I had to shoot press photos for this show at Betches in July or yeah. August in New York. And you got, you guys like listening, know like how bad I like, I was so nervous first off and that like increased the sweating and yeah. the AC wasn't working in Betches that day. And oh. the poor ladies that had to shoot me, like it was, I'm just <laughs> so like, it li literally was up. just, yeah. I was like, maybe we switched the idea to like, I just came out of a shower and I'm like, Hey, pop culture. <laughs> like I, it was so embarrassing. And I was like, how do New Yorkers do this? It's so wild. So good. Um, Okay, so we have Summer House. We have all of those shows. A yep. huge week of Bravo. Uh, in a week and a half, we have Summer House Martha's Vineyard returning for a second yes. season, which I'm excited about. Keep we your do. eyes on that. Uh, we have the Oscars tonight. Are Who are you? What category or person, like besides Kylie and Timothy on the red carpet, what do you get the most excited about for the Oscars? Do you feel the magic of the Oscars still? I feel the magic of the red carpet. That's where it is for me. Like I do love to see who takes the risks, what designers they're working with, obviously who walks with who. I know there's also a rumor about Bradley Cooper walking with Gigi Hadid. Like that is that I like the in between the awards stuff. Um, do you, I mean, do you think he's going to walk with Gigi Hadid tonight? Do you think? I think he might. I think he might. I, I mean, they've finally been in some like actual street paparazzi pictures which we all know according to obviously yeah. lady and spencer is not that real so if they're willing to do that and put their relationship out there like that i could see it happening and i would love to see whatever she's gonna wear i'm i'm just so that would be so i mean yeah you're right that would actually be a very exciting moment also yeah. i want to see Gigi hadid watching maestro like i want to see what she thinks of it i want to hey. see what she like i mean that's such an interesting pairing to begin with that i always just wonder what do these people talk about what do they what do they actually go through um to like to think about if we're in the oscars we're talking about the a-listers like we were saying you know they don't get enough as much credit these days because we love our reality stars but if we have Gigi and kylie there at the Oscars with two of the main people that are the focus, like that is big worlds colliding and going to be like pretty interesting to see. I think. What if Bradley Cooper surprises us all and he brings Risa Tisa from uh, from TikTok's yes. uh, fi the, the the fifty part story about her her wacky ex husband? That would be great if like we're, like just worlds colliding. Um, yeah, which, by the way, all ends of the spectrum. <laughs> Risa Tisa signed with Creative Ar Artist Agency this week, you guys, which is the biggest agency Crazy. you know like out here in terms of representation. So, I mean, good on her. But could you ever imagine? a day in which these creators yourself included are getting these kind of big opportunities. And for you, as we start winding down here, does that leave pressure for you of like, fuck, I got to do like 50. Well, like I got to leave my dude. Like I got to do a story. I got to like, what? I mean, like how do your, how does your creative mind work in this day and age? And also still trying to be true to who you are and, and real enough where people uh, at the end of the day, still respect you and not, being popular for just being like, you know, not, not one of those people that you want to tear apart and that's why you're popular. Yeah. You know, I think my biggest thing is I am lucky that this stuff interests me 
as a normal passion, being able to provide the value of explaining it to people, like you said before, like in a succinct way, we're like, maybe not everyone had the time that I had to watch all 50 parts of Risa Tisa, which is why, you know, I did a recap of it. And so many of the comments are like, oh my God, I'm a single mom. I don't have time, but I needed to know the drama. Thank you for keeping me in the loop. Like that's the stuff I feel like is my purpose on social is to provide like extra fun value in connections and information that like is just silly and fun, but interesting. So that is my hope of like what I can continue doing. Would I love to be on a red carpet? Duh. But you know, this is from my apartment is really where my bread and butter is. And just reading my phone like everyone else is, even Ariana after her shows. Yeah. I mean, do you, do you allow yourself to, to dream big? Are you a big, like, do you do the vision boards? Do you do the morning meditations? Like, what do you, like, I always like, I always know I always ask people this of like people that I like talking to. I'm like, you know, creators that I really like, you know, how do you approach these things and how do you not sometimes get down on, you know, like the compare and despair of this person has this, this person has that. And I don't yet. Where, where do you stand with that? I definitely am a vision boarder. I'm not a meditator. I don't have the attention span for that, which is why I'm more of a TikTok <laughs> This meditator. is how you meditate, yeah. Yeah. Um, I just try really hard because I was working in corporate for 10 years before I decided to do this full time. I try really hard to, when you do the compare and despair, to remember like that I have my wonderful husband and my friends and my family who are like my real tangible life. And yeah. To them, I've always been the person who's taking the pictures every night we've yeah. been out and like taking videos. I'm like the one who fills up my family's photo albums. Like that's always been me. So I try to remember that when I'm still at the dinner table with my family being like, I saw this thing on TikTok. Can I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, so I, I try to keep it level, but I, you know, dream big as well, as long as it's true to who I am. No, I love that. I think the sky's the limit. I'm trying to, like, I don't even know. Maybe I'll just start doing recaps of your recaps and see you if I can break it down. You know, where, no. um, but truly a delight to find. I mean, this went better than I could have ever imagined. I hope you had a good time. I hope you'll come back. Uh, it is just great to have people that are this knowledgeable and, and love it because that's what it is. Like, I don't mind hating reality stars and stuff like that, but I want it to be based around like loving this stuff totally. that we like, like, let's, you know, let's like really. We, we committed to watching these shows. Let's love it so deeply. What is the one thing that we should be watching that we're potentially not or something that maybe is not Bravo related or something that is there anything you can think of that like, oh, check this out. I was kind of interested in this. I definitely caught my eye on Couple to Thruple on Peacock. I think I need to check that out. But in all honesty, I know we're going to get it in the fall. My biggest is Dancing with the Stars. Like I know everyone did start watching it because Ariana was on I it. I finally watched the season of Dancing with the Stars because of Ariana. It's been like, that's been my show since day I was a dancer growing up. So it's always been my favorite. And that is like one where I'm like, don't miss that. Do I say that's the awesome. same about like Mass Singer? No, but I yeah. do still love that too. <laughs> Well, let me give you one. If you want to get yes. into the dregs of society, folks, I watched the first episode of, I guess I didn't even realize it was season five. I didn't realize it was Seeking Sister Wife on TLC. And this is the, guys, You like it is like those Christopher Guest movies, like Best in Show, Waiting for Guffman, but it's like supposedly real. And they're, guys, I literally, I mean, they're just, I don't even know. I don't even have verbiage to explain the insanity and you have to give it a moment. Like you can't just, cause it's the, you're like, uh, that you've got to like get into it to realize how insane this is. There's uh one couple that you can tell like the, like one, the, the, there's three wives, one husband, they want to get another wife, but you can tell the newest wife is like, they do these cutaway shots to her and she looks so uncomfortable. She's like, I don't think we need another one yet. And you can tell like she's being bullied into potentially getting another wife into the, uh, guys. I've just never seen anything like it. And it's, it's such a train wreck. It is not oh. the traitors. It is not something you should be proud of watching, but it is something that is like, it is, I'm, I don't know. Just let me know what you guys think. Cause it is insane. I am going to put that on my list and hopefully next time I'm back, we can talk about it. <laughs> I'm so sorry to do that to you, Abby. I know okay. you're, you don't, you don't need that kind of uh, horrible list. Anyways, uh, Abby Bonadis, where do we find you? How do we help you? How do we support oh. you? Because I think you help us in a lot of ways, uh, talking about pop culture. What, what do we do? What do we, what do we do? Uh, follow me, Instagram, TikTok, threads, all at Abby Bonadis. I am 
constantly on TikTok doing flow charts, but my Instagram stories are really where you'll get that like immediate breaking news. I also love if anyone else is like a marketing nerd out there like me, I have this thing where I call them my marketing awards. So my smart marketing awards for campaigns of like when Craig did a partnership with Panera because he loves soup and just like silly stuff. Craig like Conover? That. Yes. I'm like, that. I love that kind of, you know, geeky marketing partnership era of where we are in the world. And I post all of that on my Instagram and my TikTok. So if you're a marketing nerd, find that with me too. I think marketing is just a huge part of pop culture right now anyway. So yeah. it's great to have a 360 view of everything. So you guys, I'll put all of that information in the show notes. I'll also put it on my Instagram story. So make sure you go follow, make sure you check her out. She is a great person. And I think she's one to watch. Hey, she's a so bad it's good one to watch this year. I'm just going to make up something new that I've never done before. <laughs> one to watch. Uh, I look forward to the next time talking to you and I cannot wait to hear what you think of the Oscars tonight. Me too. Thanks for having Thanks, me. Thanks, Abby. Great.